Hi, this is Todd from TT Bike Fit. We're going to talk about a few of the uh, special or unique features of the Kestrel 4000 um, that it's good for the owners to uh, be aware of. Uh, the brakes are obviously one of the, the main things that are different. The front and the rear brake are basically exactly the same, so what applies to this front brake is also going to apply to the rear brake. Uh, first, just to release the brake, if you just squeeze the calipers together, this little hook will pop out and then flip that hook up and then that opens your brakes up for you. So that's how you can take your wheel in and out. And you want to shut that down again, you just squeeze the brakes together, put that little hook back on, and you're all set, and your brakes work. Okay, front brake has a adjustment barrel up here. So by tightening or loosening that barrel, you're gonna tighten or loosen your cable, and that's gonna open or close your brakes. So that's one way to adjust the distance of the brakes um, to your rim here in the front. Now the back brake does not have one of these back underneath the frame, but when I build these frames, I put a cable adjuster in line with the cable up here. So if you can see this little barrel adjuster here, and you notice that mine has a fair bit of this black part sticking out. So let's say you're riding and your, your rim goes out of screw or something like that and starts rubbing on the brakes. While you're riding, if you turn this so that the black part actually retracts back into the barrel, that's opening up your back brake. So that will actually give you um, some clearance there between the back brake pads. So that's your uh, barrel adjuster for the back brake. Okay, let's go back down and look at the brake. I've been asked about these silver parts right here. All these are are basically cosmetic covers. They just snap on, you just put your fingernail, your screwdriver under there, and they'll pop right off of there. And that's your fastening bolts for the brakes. So that's, they go right into the studs that come out of the frame. So you pop those off and you put a five millimeter wrench and that's why you can actually remove the whole caliper. But obviously there's typically no reason to do that. Cable fastening bolts here. These are two and a half millimeter screws. There's one on this side and there's one on this side. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that, you know, when you fasten the cable here, just like with any brake, that you tighten it up um, tight, and I like to tighten both sides up and uh, make sure they're good and firm to uh, anchor your cable. Now, these being cantilever brakes, if you have any experience with mountain bikes or cycle cross brakes, uh, centering these brakes is accomplished by using these little screws on the side here. Each side has this little screw, it's a two millimeter screw, and if you tighten the screw on this side, it makes the spring tension higher, which will pull the brake pad away from the rim on this side, and it'll pull the other side towards the brake pad. So by pitting this screw against the screw on the other side and tightening one and loosening the other or vice versa, you can shift the brakes in either direction to help center the brakes. So remember, there's one on this side and one on this side, and you can use them both to move the brakes in either direction. So that pretty much covers what you need to know about the brakes that are different from standard bike brakes. Uh, one of the other things that, that's really quite different and unique about this bike is the rear dropout. So let's try to, what I'm actually going to do I think is just flip the bike around here. So pull this out and we will look at the rear dropouts. Okay, so as opposed to a lot of other tri bikes on the market with curved seat tubes where, you know, the idea for aerodynamics is to keep that back wheel fairly tight. You don't have to go crazy with that, by the way, and really you're better off if you don't because you're going to get rocks and stuff going up in there and scratching the frame. So you can see I have a, you know, decent gap between my tire and my seat tube here. And as opposed to other bikes where they have a horizontal dropout, which means a slot that's horizontal where you have to adjust little screws or various other devices to move the wheel in and out, Kestrel has used standard vertical dropouts. Okay, so that means it's easier to change the tire, it's just like, a, or change the wheel, remove the wheel, it's just like a standard road bike. It just drops out of the dropouts because they're vertical dropouts. But they have the feature that you can move the dropouts forward or back by loosening these two four millimeter screws here. And there's, there's a pair of them on the other dropout here as well. So what happens is, if you loosen these two screws, they're four millimeter screws, on both sides, you can maneuver the back wheel 
forward and back. So you can shove it up all the way against the tube here, the C tube here, which, as I said, you don't really want to do, or you can pull it quite far back. Obviously, when you do that, you want to look from behind and see that the wheel is centered in the frame. Because there's no, you know, there's no, you can certainly set it very crooked if you don't pay attention. So you want to make sure that, that when you're moving it in and out, if you do move it in and out, that you keep the wheel centered. These should be torqued to about eight newton meters if you have a torque wrench. So it's fairly, fairly snug for a four millimeter screw because obviously it's not anything you really want to slip, have slip on you while you're riding. Also be aware that if you do change your back wheel setting, that it's going to affect where your brake pads line up with the rim. So you may also have to move your brake pads as well to make sure that they line up with the braking surface on your rim. But at least it's good to know about this, about this feature here and uh, that you have the ability to change that. And really it makes these, once these are set, you usually don't have to play with them unless you're really uh, crazy about, you know, tight, getting this really tight to the, uh, to the seat tube. Once they're set, you don't really have to play with them, and then your, uh, your back wheel will drop out of these dropouts easily, much more easily than a bike with a horizontal dropout setup. The one caveat to that is if you do happen to set your back wheel really tight here, meaning putting a, letting the dropouts slide forward, uh, then it becomes a little more difficult to get this back wheel out because it moves the uh, axle right up here into the frame and it becomes more difficult to get it out. In fact, it can be easier if you just remove the whole skewer. So that's another reason that you probably don't really want to bother having the wheel, you know, snugged up real tight here, having the dropouts pushed forward. I'll bring up one other thing while, we, while we've got the bike here that everyone should be aware of, and that just has to do with the, the seat post. I'm going to turn this around once again. We're going to put it up here, and the seat post head is adjustable. There's two four millimeter screws up here, and if you loosen those, then you can slide the seat post head. Most triathletes are going to be using the, uh, the seat post head all the way forward, and so you're going to want to make sure that those, that those stay tight here so this doesn't move. And then, of course, you've got this single screw here, which fastens your saddle and controls the angle of the saddle. And that screw needs to be fairly tight. It needs to be about 12 newton meters. In fact, it says it right on there um, so that you don't get any saddle movement or slipping of the saddle. So that's pretty much all the uh, really unique features about the 4000 that you need to know. And actually, I, as I was about to say, I thought of one other thing here that might be interesting for, uh, for 4000 owners to know. And that has to do with the cable routing. Obviously, the the um, two shifter cables and the back brake cable go into holes right here in the top two. The, uh, the front shifter cable housing actually bottoms out inside the frame right here. The back brake cable bottoms out against a uh, plastic, um, removable plastic cover here right under the bottom bracket. But the rear shifter cable is one piece, goes all the way through the frame, comes out here. So you'll notice that if I if I pull on the housing here, if I pull this housing up, if you look at the uh, cable back here, Elizabeth, the, um, you'll see that it's, it's connected. So that it's possible that if you ever, you know, if you pack this in a bike box or whatever, that, um, you know, you might end up pulling this housing through all the way. And you might be wondering, why the heck do I have so much housing out here, so little housing back there? And that's just because they're one piece. So um, just something to be aware of. Another thing to be aware of is a little bit unique about the 4,000.